I've been making quite a few changes in the way that I use Obsidian, so I thought I'd do a, an updated video on how I'm using Obsidian in the early 2021, because I'm sure it will change in the future. I've added some tags, I've changed the way that I'm taking notes instead of taking atomic notes, I'm taking larger, bigger notes, condensing things together, as I expressed in a previous video, so I thought I'd go through and show you exactly what I'm doing and how I'm using Obsidian currently in all of my research and planning. So when I go into this, in, into my Obsidian, this is my, my home note, my main note. Anyone looking at Obsidian Publish, you'll be able to see all of my notes except from the templates, which you can download, link in description, the personal file, which is personal, so I don't want them online, uh, and the PDFs, because all the PDFs are accessible either through University Login or through uh, Sci-Hub or something similar. So these three folders aren't on Obsidian Publish, but everything else, so the 3,000 in there and the 600 in there, that is all on Obsidian Publish, link in the description for you to have a look around so everything I see today you will be able to look through and if you have any questions join the uh, discord and ask me a question in there or leave a comment in YouTube but obviously I, I may not be able to respond to all of those because YouTube's notifications aren't great uh, so I've got actually a script up so I, I don't lose track of everything I'm going to be using hotkeys because that's how I navigate around obsidian so I will be telling you what hotkeys I use but obviously you can change those as and when you want because in obsidian you can customize the hotkeys that you use so when I go back back to my homepage, you can see that was a workspace, which I will go through in a minute. But this is where I will always go to like default every day, uh, because it's got the setup that I want. I have the tags on the side, I have my backlinks, my outgoing links, I then have the outline, the calendar, the local graph. I see the local graph first, because that's my preference. Uh, and then I have this page. I don't use this as an index page, as a starting point. It's more of a, because of the way workspaces work, I want a page to start, and then I will use Control Shift Y to go to my daily note. So this is today's note. And these are some notes that I've taken just that were just brain dumping stuff down. Most of this would disappear towards the end of the day, but you can see I, uh, I read an article earlier that had these two applications. The article was pretty pants, but it did mention these two things. Connected papers I think I already have, but I'm not sure. I can't remember, so I put that down and I'll probably sort that out later on. Uh, and then I have actually a tweet that uh, something I tweeted out yesterday about 200 uh, plus talking speed. And this is my this is my journal note Q-ish. So if there's anything I want to speak about, journal about, uh, or explore in, in, in speaking, uh, I, I put the note here. So this was actually in yesterday's note, which is here, uh, but I decided to put it into today's because I was going to talk about it today. Now, previous videos, you'll have seen that I audio journal. So if I go into my journal note or into my journal folder uh, and I go all the way back, you'll be able to see I have my audio journal in here, which are audio files. Now, I did do that on my phone, uh, but what I was doing was or recording myself, and it was being put into, I don't think it's in any of these anymore, no, I got rid of them, but they were in the daily note. Now, because I'm not doing that, actually, maybe it's in, no, it's not, uh, but they were in my daily note. Now, I'm still doing it, but the reason I changed it is the audio was great, but I wasn't seeing my, my expressions, my facial expressions, and, and things that I was doing, and I also wanted to share my screen sometimes, because there were references that I was like, oh, yeah, there's that thing, and I referenced whatever it was, and I looked it up on my computer, but I couldn't see that in the audio. So sometimes when I went to my computer in the journal to check on something, going to my Obsidian, or going onto Google and checking a definition, of something I couldn't see that so now I'm doing it like this face to face on camera and I'm putting it onto YouTube as an unlisted video and sharing it through patreon so if you want to have a look at all of my audio journals my daily journals how I'm doing that you can do through patreon again link in the description uh, so the cues of today control shift Y again uh, the Q, the cues for today are cues for my own video journal which is about a 10 minute video recording of me talking about something this was talking speed 200 and the implications of my consumption speed and everything else that's going on um, yeah so there's that then when you actually look at this page this is a templated page so I have uh, this stuff that comes in the YAML, which is uh, a, a community plugin, which basically tells me the last time I updated it. And I have that on every single page. So I know when I last updated it, you can see it when you hover over, it says last modified and created, and you see there in the hover over, but I like to see it in the YAML, just my personal preference, a community plugin, which is, that was control shift S uh, to get to this section. And that is this one, update time on edit. And that's what it allows me to do. Uh, these are the other plugins I have, Calendar, which I showed you a second ago, is a plugin Kanban, which I'll go through later on, and Pandoc, which I will probably do in a separate video because that's a whole separate workflow. So this is the calendar plugin. I don't use it that much. Uh, that's the outline. That's a core plugin. Uh, and 
yeah so that that is why why I have these here and the template page if you come into here you can see daily template this is a core plugin you can download these templates through again link in the description uh, and what these allow me to do is when I create a new page so control shift n uh, and then I go daily template this is what it come this is what comes in so it, it automatically puts in the current date in this format and then what I will do is I will manually uh, come into here and then change it to one so now it's yesterday and then I will actually change that one to three so now it's tomorrow now it's shaded because it hasn't been created yet uh, now that note there was me manually making it uh, that was control alt backspace to delete the page and control K, K to close the page uh, now this this is automatic because it's a core plugin so when I open up obsidian tomorrow this template will m be automatically put in for today or for tomorrow's date uh, which will which will create this page and that link will automatically be made uh, now you will also notice that I have weekly pages so I've got weekly reviews in here which 2021 2022 and if I go to one of these weekly pages you can see this is last week not this week uh, I have related all of the I say related I've linked all of the daily notes to this page and what what essentially I do is I've made I've made this week here and I will actually just quickly show you so I will come into here go week template and this is the same process as the daily unit I'll go in I'll change that to seven so it's last week change that to nine so it's the next week and then change all of these to the appropriate days um, and again same thing control or backspace control K uh, and now we have this note which is slowly filling out and when I go through this note I will pin it so that's control shift P so you can see it's now pinned now when I open up this page it opens it up as a separate panel then I can go through and I can see the backlinks of all of these different notes that I took capture notes that I took uh, on this day and then I will drag them over so if I go to uh, let's close this out let's unpin that so I can go back to this one and now let's pin this now when I go on to the 14th you can see one of the notes that I brought in was Bloom's Taxonomy and this this weekly recap re weekly note is actually my podcast which I do on my second channel again link in the description uh, and all of these different points in here I look at so I control hover to have a look okay what is this about is this useful yeah I'll talk about that so I'll drag it in I'll drag it over to this one of course uh, I'll drag it in and then write a quick note and then explore that in my podcast and, and talk about the different topics and ideas not all of the points here not all of the backlinks are brought into the weekly note you can see on the 15th there was nothing so let's have a look what happened on the 15th uh, I consumed these three things or these four things which were different videos but I didn't see them as needed or noteworthy or exploratory worthy to be put into the podcast or the weekly review so I didn't bother uh, but that's that's how this works and that's how the weekly review works and all these weeks are linked so I can go all the way back uh, I should probably have unpinned that uh, so I can go all the way back and see what was going on if we go back to uh, this one we can see oh it goes back to 2021 and then all the way back from there uh, so that is the weekly reviews then moving forwards let's go to the video script to make sure I'm not forgetting anything yeah we've got the daily notes got the folders and a weekly note yes so we've got the notes section now notes folders this changed slightly this has changed slightly over time so I've, I've numbered these purely because of in publish uh, it doesn't always give you the, the the right order so I've numbered it so I can make sure it's in the right order the capture notes are all of the first notes that I see so these here that you see this is a paper capture note and this is a video capture note from Matt Diavella's video yesterday I, I left that in there so I could process it in this video so we've got the capture notes these articles blogs image I don't really come into here this is more of a storage for the notes for when I footnote them or reference them in other notes which are processing and working so if we go into processing notes you'll be able to see that we've got loads of other notes now I will say a small caveat here is that a lot of these processing notes are from my old system using atomic notes so a lot of these are very small that redundant don't really mean anything but there's no point in me processing these notes because I, I it's just a waste of time to be honest uh, however when I'm working in the working notes which is what I'm doing I'm going through and actually merging some of these smaller notes with the bigger notes so I come in here um, let me think so if, let, let's there we go this is a good example so cognitive psychology is a is a working note and as I scroll down you can see in here we've got this note 
which is a capture note. It's a video capture note that I've referenced in this working note. So what this means basically is I've, I've watched a video, I've gone, okay, that's an interesting point from the video, let's put it into this note, cognitive psychology. Okay, let's bring this together. So this note and this note said the same thing. And both of these saying the same thing is now in this line where task is referenced there. So both of those piece, both of those pieces of content reference the same point. So I've condensed them together and put them into one sentence. Uh, in this example, we've got four pieces of content that have said the same point. And there are multiple examples of that all over my space where I have multiple references in one page. However, this is where the working notes started to differ. In my working notes, I realized, well, actually, I've got loads of working notes and I'm working on lots of different ideas at lots of different times. So how do I focus on something? And this is where the tags come in. So my working notes, I have 94, there are 92 here. So two processing notes are tagged with something. I'm not sure what, uh, but what this allows me to do is see what what working notes uh, I'm actually, what I'm actually doing with some of the working notes. So if I go expanding, these are notes that are, that I've, I've just, I'm just dumping loads of things in. So if I scroll down, all of these are capture notes that this is a point that relates to being a healthy person. A capture note, loads of points, capture note, loads of points, etc. Now, some of these points are going to be the same as other points from other capture notes, which is when, when I start processing them uh, and moving that into the exploring stage, I will then start combining those things together like you just saw with the reference. I'll start combining those things together and say, okay, both of these capture notes, both of these videos or articles or whatever, say this same point. And I will then expand from there. So uh, the exploring page, we can see we can come down in here. A lot of these points are already repeated. So you can see in here, we've got repeated points. We've got started to bring some references in. <clears throat> So this, this page is now, I'm not expanding it because I've got the points that I really need, the, the main points and all the other content I'm consuming is just repeating the same thing. So it's at a point now where I understand it and have enough notes to just explore, well, explore the points that I've made. <clears throat> Now, when when I mentioned the merge, this page here was a separate atomic note, one of those smaller notes in the processing, which is in here. It was one of the smaller notes. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to merge it with this note. So let me give you an example very quickly. If I'm on bore out, I will come into here uh, and I will go merge. So slash merge note composer, and then I will merge it with whatever main note I'm working with. What this means is that all of these processing notes, eventually when I'm working with things that are related will disappear because they will merge into those bigger notes, which was this one that was a uh, control square bracket to go back. Now these, these notes, are uh, still still exploring so i'm still working through them but a lot of this information isn't needed so i will do this very quickly now so i'll just exit all of that now this is still in the to do section so i know i need to action this stuff uh, however in the points there's nothing here so i know i still need to summarize things which is where the to summarize note comes in the to more well, tag comes in the to summarize tag is things that I've got the points, I've condensed the points, but now I want to try and find some research to justify the points that I've made. So in here, there are lots of different points. You can see there are loads of videos that all talk about filtering out information. So all of those videos would have been different points in, in the, in the uh, processing note, and I just condensed them all together and basically said, hey, uh, this one sentence, which is here, this one sentence summarizes all of these pieces of content. So that's that's where it is. If I go into the preview view, preview view, that was control shift space. Again, that's my shortcut. You can see it's turned into numbers. So if I think it was the third reference. No, it was the first one. Uh, but I can come down and now I can see all of the different capture notes and the original notes that I took for that point. And then I click the arrow and it takes me back to where I was. Now, most of the time I don't use that view. That's for uh, Obsidian published for everyone else to see, but it does mean that I, oh, there's something in there that I've got rid of. So I must have got rid of that note. Um, yeah, so what that it, what it, what this allows me to do is see all the different references that I have. Now, this is to summarize. And the reason this is different from done is because a lot of these points, as you saw, are videos or articles, and they are typically subjective, opinionated, or one case study reviews of an idea of a thing. They're not meta-analysis or systematic reviews or academic research papers that suggest this is true. And there's it, lower quality essentially. So this is still to summarize because there's no there's no research to justify what's going on. 
Whereas, if I go to the done page, cognitive load theory, here are the academic articles that justify what's, what I've said, but the videos, just one video in this case, <laughs> but the, the videos that talk about uh, cognitive load theory are down at the bottom. Let's go to another one, Hypo the, the, blah, blah, blah. hypothesis of extended cognition. These are papers. Um, well, that's not a paper, so these still need to be sort of extended, but I'm quite happy because of the, the quality of this video, because I know this video is done by Andy Clark, who actually did the research. I know the video is high quality because he's citing his own research in the video, whereas other videos, so if I go down to other references, this one, Annie Murphy-Paul, this was done by someone that was reviewing the book. Now, it's still a valid piece of content. It's still useful, but the quotes that are mentioned are from the book, which I already have referenced up here somewhere yeah in here there you go Annie Murphy Paul and there's the book so I don't need uh, that video reference up at the top because I have the better higher quality reference i.e. the book itself up at the top this is a, an academic paper it's just I haven't put the reference in because it's not a, an official academic paper because it's on a blog so that is how I differentiate between working notes now previously I didn't have any tags then we've got the paper tag which literally as it says because academic papers are capture notes so there's still capture notes like videos and blogs but there's more information in them i process them for my modes so I, I i mentioned the home workspace this is the board workspace i will go through workspaces in a second but this is what i do for the most so the most is monthly observations of educational science it's uh, some research that i do if you want to have access to all the research uh, that i share again link to patreon uh, all the information is on there so all of these papers will be in this month's modes and these papers are different different sections at different stages but this this is a, a nice overview but it doesn't always give me exactly what I want when it comes to the, the papers that I'm looking at because sometimes I just want to go, okay, give me the to check. There it is. So it's a very, it's, it's a quicker and easier way to see what stage things are at. So I know this paper I need to check, which actually happens to be one that is in my starred panel because PhD researchers, my the PhD team that I'm working with, we're discussing this paper at the moment. And there's going to be a meeting in a couple of weeks about this paper. So I've got it. So it's easily accessible. Then if I want to know what I need to write, I still need to write all of these papers out. So you can see I've got the references down the bottom, but I haven't actually done them. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, when I go back to my homepage, uh, again, that was Control Shift O to open up the workspace uh, workspace switcher, and then I pushed H for home, and then enter on my keyboard. That's how I got back here very quickly. And let's go to the video script to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. That's the tags panel has changed. Yes. Um. So the PDFs, the next section, the PDFs are all in here. Is in a folder. Um. But the they are related to the notes. So this note here was actually from Zotero. If I open up my Zotero very quickly, I will show you that this is what it is. This is the paper. This is the original paper. This is the actual like PDF. This is the, well, that's the PDF. This is the exported notes. So if I open up this PDF very quickly, you can see there are all the highlighted points. All these highlighted points have been extracted into this note. This note has then been turned into a MD note. And that MD note is here. This is where it's stored, but this isn't the same format as my other papers. And the reason is this is the ex ex exported version, whereas this one is the one that I made. This is the one that I made, which is in the board view. So if I go back to the board view, all of these have this, this set up. And if I go to this one, this has got it set up, but it doesn't have any notes at the bottom because I know this is a paper I'm going to review. It's one of those uh, in my Zotero that I still need to look through. This one is the paper that was control H to show the side panel. This is the paper from here, but like I say, this is the original page I made. The, diff the, the reason they're the same is because they've got the same name. Uh, now what I will do is I'll come into here. I will get rid of all of that. I'll backspace that. I'm going to control A to highlight everything. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, then Control Alt backspace to delete that page because don't need any more. Control K to close that down. And now I have all of those highlighted points from my external PDF in my capture note in here. Now this this note I've actually already filed away into paper capture because I I know it's going to take a while to process. So when I am going to process it, I'll either come into here and click there and there we are. Or I will come into here and go, okay, what do I need to do today? Uh, let's go and check. Was it even check? I don't think, no, it's to write, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was check. You know what? Where was it? To note. It was to note. Uh, doesn't look like I've got the right tag on it. So 
there you go. This is me making mistakes as I go through. Let's come in because I I, I did this in a recording beforehand. See, I'm not going to edit this out. I did this in a recording beforehand, so I've actually already done this twice. To read, uh, to note. Now, when I come back here, it's in to note. There we go. And there we go. Ha ha. Um, I already went through that process, which is why it didn't appear where I was expecting it to appear. Uh, but video mistakes. So this is where it now is. What uh, what I will then do, uh, what I'm now going to do is go through this note. So that was a paper note, and when I'm processing the paper note, I'm just summarizing the paper, uh, and then I will put that into the pages very similar to what I'm doing now. So this is a video from Matt Diavella, and this was created using a template. Templates, linked in description again. Uh, bring up the template in here. This is where the source goes. This is where the author goes. Now I know I've already got Matt Diavella, so I can just type in Matt and go down to Matt Diavella there. Uh, the date is automatically put in, which automatically links it to today's date because this is today's date and this is the format of today's note. You can see the, the note from earlier. And then this is going to be new video. Oops, new video. This will show there. And the reason I have this most of the time is with papers, so I can open it up twice and see a top part of the page and a bottom part of the page at the same time. So let's get rid of that. Let's delete that page and get rid of that. So now we've got this, this capture note, this video capture note. What am I going to do with it? Well, I know I can see energy at the time of day, energy required, and rest is productive. So this is energy management. So I'm going to open up uh, my pages. I'm going to look for my energy management note. Now, in here, I have some information. I want to add this in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and then paste it down in here. And then for the reference, I'm going to drag it over, or you could just copy the, the title in there. Uh, and then it's now in here. So all of these uh, are the exact same process. If I want to reference this somewhere else, so let's go to our, prod our level of productivity. So I push control enter that time to open it up as a separate panel rather than replacing this panel uh, and now now say let's say rest is productive we'll come into here and we will bring it there then we will add that in there uh, and while i'm doing this i'm thinking actually you know what rest and recovery that's that's also another note i've got uh, let's close down that for a second so it's easier to see let's come into here let's let's copy that again so i'm going to copy that note i'm going to paste it in there bring that tag over and now when i come to this page and have a look at the backlinks it's linked to rest and recovery energy management and our level of productivity and if i hold control because that's the setting i have for my page preview um i can have a look down that page or where it is if i open this up i can see oh there's there's the link what is it that's the note there if i open this up you can see that's what's noted there energy management open it up oops didn't want to click on all of that let's go back uh, uh energy management then I open it up. Now I've got the whole block, and that's why I get rid of those spaces so I can see the entire block of what's going on um, in this little view over here. Now that I have attached these points, these points are essentially in places that I want them to be in, and if I start working on the notes, notes I can see it. So I'm going to go Control M to move my shortcut, uh, V for video. So I'm moving this this note. From, uh, from just an empty file to the notes, the capture folder and the video folder, and then I push enter, and now it's gone. So now it's no longer in here, and now it is in here, uh, there. There we go. So that's that's where it's gone. I, I don't typically go into there, but that's how I sort them. Then when I go uh, into any of these notes, so let's go into energy management, I can see, oh, there it was. What was that about? That's the video. And let's click on the link to see whatever the video was. So that's how I process video notes, blogs, articles, and all of those sorts of things. And the papers are basically the same thing. If there's a point from a paper that's related. So let's open up the Cognitive Load Theory page for a second. So Sweller 2011 is somewhere. There it is. Uh, so this paper, let's open it up as the second page, has loads of different notes on it. Uh, and all of these different notes are in this cognitive load theory page. The reason there are slight differences in these highlights is because this, this is a main working page, but these highlights could also be linked to other pages, like I've done with working memory here. Now, just to give you an idea for those that are familiar with Obsidian, uh, I've actually used an alias for this. So it's going to the page called memory but I've made it so that it looks like working memory. And that's how I will work with all of these points. So as an example, with 
biological primary skill. It is a note from Cognitive Load Theory paper and a couple of other papers as well. Uh, but biolo biological primary skill relates to knowledge and understanding, which could be linked to my understanding page. So let's bring up my understanding page in here. Okay, we've got knowledge. Now, if it's biological primary knowledge, maybe I have a, a subheading in here called biological primary knowledge, something like that. Um, that was control D to, to delete the line. Uh, and maybe there's a secondary knowledge. And what I will do is I'll come in here. I will go in here, understanding, and then I will put in, I think that's called pipe, uh, and then biological primary, there you go. Uh, and now it's a linked page to this understanding. But because I haven't made that link and I don't have the explanation in there yet, it's just a bold uh, a bold word. That's, that's how I approach linking different concepts. And you'll see some of them, see, learning, that's linked. This one is just a bold, bold topic. Uh, and that is that is how I expand on those notes and how I transfer the notes from a paper to whatever this is. And when I come into here, I will show you. Let's go down to the references for a second. Uh, all the way down here. So let's, I can't even remember where solar is. There it is. Uh, you can see I've got two, two arrows here. And this is because I've referenced this, this particular uh, paper twice. So I can click there and I'm in here. So it's three. So this was a point directly from the paper. If I come down here and I go back up to the top, this is the first time that I deliberately referenced the paper. And you'll be able to see that in Obsidian Publish as well. So let's come back into the video script. We've done PDF, personal show. So personals, I, I don't have much in here. You can see there's 22 files and four folders. This is the book that I've recently written and will be published next month, I believe. And I'm going to do a video explaining all of my planning with that. These are the docs. So these are just external files. That's a, an Excel file, Excel file, PDF and PDF, but they're personal. So I don't want to share them on Obsidian Publish. Uh, and then pages, personal pages, which I'm not going to share because they're personal. But yeah, so that's where they're stored. But most of my files are all in notes and journal. And that's where most people's files will be. The, the only reason I separated them is because I share my notes publicly. Uh, with Obsidian Publish and it's just easier just to have personal notes in one folder and just not share the folder. Uh, templates, link in description. <laughs> uh, the templates here, the one that I've added, so those of you that downloaded the uh, templates from Gumroad previously won't have this template because I added this uh, on the yeah 4th of February. There you go. Um, and what this is, if I open this up, is that's that's all it is. But what it allows me to do is no matter where I am in a note, I can add today's date. So I can add like tag today's date. Uh, let's get rid of that page actually for a second and open up uh, scale acquisition because I believe there was something actually it might be easier to go Rob Gray because I believe there's one of his podcast episodes that I've listened to a couple of times. You know what? Let's pin that for a second. So this is me just exploring the pages. Uh, nope, not that one. Not that one. I'm sure there was. There we go. So this podcast I've listened to multiple times. You can see 25th, 31st and 3rd because I've gone back to it. And instead of making a new note of this podcast, I've just added in. So using the today template, I've just come into here and gone uh, T today and okay I've watched this again today and then I've ad adjusted and changed the notes so that's that's how I'm using that because uh, I'm finding that I'm going back to some of the sources again maybe I've watched a video I've got notes on the video and I'm exploring it I thought you know what I want to watch this video again so I do and I make sure that I've I've added the note in again and that's what that template is for so let's go back to the home page uh, and again link in description below for all those downloads of that Right, I think we're now onto all of the panels and stuff. Yeah, so this starred panel, you've seen me use it a little bit already. Video script, I always have it there, and I use my outline to uh, explore all the different video ideas that I have. You can see at the top, I've got how I work, that is a playlist on YouTube. Um, tool swap, again, a playlist on YouTube. Educational science, science-based stuff, a playlist on YouTube, etc., etc. So this one is going to be in the How I Work playlist and the Obsidian Note-Taking playlist because it's HIOB. This one is science-backed. Uh, this one is underneath science-backed. You can see in here it's a uh, different level headings, and I can see immediately what sort of video it's going to be. Um, and that's that's how I use the video script because it's easy to navigate straight to it. Uh, and that's where we're currently at. This is the paper that I mentioned earlier, the PDF that I'm using for the um, PhD. So this, this paper I need quick access to for when we have that meeting or when I want to reference it at all. Misconceptions is currently a page that I'm, I'm actively working on. You can see I'm working to summarize. So I'm actively working on it. I'll probably work on it today uh, and start summarizing some of these other points because uh, in to do, I've still got these papers to 
to put into. So those notes that I mentioned earlier, all of these points in here, some of them are going to be repeated, others won't be, but I'm going to put those notes into this page in here so it all makes sense and then explain it in a more, um, in, a, in a better way, basically. Then I have the brain. This is an expanding note, but I was looking through, because of the misconceptions relating it to cognitive load theory and cognitive psychology, I was bringing up neuroscience. And what I realized is a lot of the information that I have in neuroscience relates to the brain and also relates to cognitive neuroscience and cognitive psychology as two different things. Uh, and cognition is a page that I have as well. So I was debating about combining the brain and neuroscience together because the brain is the mushy stuff and neuroscience typically is the study of the mushy stuff, basically. Uh, and so they're here for me to go oh yeah that's what I was currently thinking that's what I'm working on let's do that um, so that that is this tab and what I will do once I finished is I will just remove it from the starred panel so let's go there let's remove the other page uh, now we've got the backlinks panel you've seen me have a look at this already but this is the backlinks to all the pages most of my daily notes link to like I said because of the template link to all of the things that I've researched like I showed you in the uh, weekly review so that's how I use a backlinks panel the outgoings panel most of the time that I, I, I go to this panel is when I know there is an outgoing link from a page but I can't find where it is in the page for whatever reason and sometimes I, I literally just go control F to find the page if I know what it's called uh, other times I will come in here because there's only a couple things and I'll just click straight to it sometimes I will come into the, the local graph but very rarely most of the times I will find it so control F find it in the page or if there aren't that many outgoing links I'll come into here but this is more of a panel just for the odd convenience rather than me actually using it obviously in the tag panel I've gone through the calendar I don't use at all really it's just there because I don't know it just is to be honest uh, the out the outline I've covered that quite well when I go to cognitive load theory because it's a page that I know I finished uh, there's the outline and I can fold unfold move things around and everything underneath the heading so if I go to retrieval practice as an example uh, you can see we've got other videos and I know I've got videos down here which is why I'm in here uh, I can drag this up there and now it's changed it. So I've moved sections around, which is really useful with the outline plugin, especially when I have different topics and ideas. So when I was in the cognitive load theory page and I was trying to work out what was going on, uh, I had cognitive architecture, but I had natural information processing as its own thing all the way down the bottom. And I thought, you know what? That's actually part of cognitive architecture. And instead of me having to do like a, a cut, copy, paste type thing of all of this, I just moved it up, which is really useful in the outline plugin. With the local graph, I believe that's the next thing on the list anyway. Uh, outline, yeah, yes, local graph. With the local graph, I have groups. I don't see the groups, so you can't see any of the groups at the moment because of the filter, but I have journal. Then I have people. So any people note I have, because I want to make sure that I, I can differentiate between people and actual notes. Uh, then I have processing notes, working notes, and then capture notes. So if I do want to see what's actually going on in the page, I can go in there. And the main reason I use the groups is so I can see how many capture notes I have around a topic, so how many green dots are around a topic. If I go to, uh, let's just go cognitive low theory because it's an easy page to access, because <laughs> CLT. Uh, so if I get rid of this filter, it's going to show me, go away, it's going to show me that I actually have some capture notes and I've got some processing notes that I need to sort or go through that relate to cognitive load theory. But most of the time I don't want to see all of that so I just filter it for working so the working notes that I'm actually using are being shown here. That's how I use the local graph view and for uh, other topics let's go to uh, HEC, Hypothesis of Extended Cognition. If you haven't watched that video, it's very interesting in my opinion. Um, <laughs> ethical, ethical and legal considerations of how we how we perceive tech is really cool. Uh, anyway, so this is my note and you can see these are all the other related points. So there's cognitive load theory, there's daily routine, and that's linked to Hypothesis of, of Extended Cognition as this note here. So if I come into here, you can see there it is. So sort, capture notes, and the capture note has been moved into extended cognition, so I probably want to get rid of that link. Um, but that's there, so I can see all of the different links to a note in this point here. Hopefully that makes sense, and that's why I use the local graph. It's not often I use this, because most of the time I'm in the pages, but that's that's how I use it, why I use it, why I have the filters and groups the way it is. On Obsidian Publish, the filter I don't believe is there, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, then we have workspaces, so I will quickly cover that. This is the workspace core plugin, so if I go Control shift s I go core plugin, I type 
workspace. Yeah, there it is. And I've activated the workspace core plugin. And if I can control P type workspace, I can load a workspace, manage a workspace or save and load workspace. I've got hotkeys for that, of course. So I go control shift U. I can then add a workspace. What is a workspace? You may ask, uh, this is a workspace. So if I go control shift H, all of these panels stayed the same, but it went back to this one page. So if I move, uh, yeah, let's move search up there. Let's drag this down to there. Let's put that on the page. This looks absolutely disgusting, but hey-ho. Um, there, That is a workspace. So if I saved that, this configuration of all the pages will be a workspace. But because I don't want that, um, I'm just going to go back here. Something to note with workspaces is that all the filters and groups that you've saved in the local graph, you will also save in the workspace. So if you go back to a workspace having changed filters or groups that so if for example let's get rid of this filter so now i'm looking at now i'm looking at this this graph without the filter but when i come back into here it's added the filter back so it saves the groups and the filters that you've had from from the local graph uh, i think that covers most things Workspace board, yes. Um, one thing I do want to add uh, right at the end is with all of these different points here, uh, this is uh, a community plugin that I use quite often to see the pages like this. Th this is how I, I, I go through and like give myself an overview of whatever it is that is going on. If you want to ask me questions about any of the things that I've discussed in this video, I suggest joining the Discord. Um, again, link in description because it's easier to contact me through Discord than it is YouTube because YouTube doesn't give me notifications on all of the comments. So hopefully that's been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, like I say, leave it in the comment section or in Discord.